Hi, this is Simon and Aaron with Assets and Arbitrage. Today we have a fantastic show with some great friends. Yes, indeed. So uh, these are uh, colleagues of mine, firefighters. <laughs> shout out to the Cincinnati Fire Department. Yeah. I always shout out them. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to bring you that I Trust Capital show we've been talking about. So uh, we have here you know, um, uh, Randy McLeod, who we had on uh, a few weeks ago talking about Belize. And then we have the chief, yes. Percy Grisby, who is going to give us the rundown on I Trust Capital and just tell you his experience in dealing with it. Okay. Yes, indeed. Yep. So um, first question I would uh, ask Percy, mm -hmm. the chief, um, how did you find out about I Trust Capital? Oh, first of all, I like to say, hey, family, love y'all. And everybody that's out there uh, listening, y'all already know this is not financial advice. We just want to come on here and give y'all some information on a great platform on something that will be beneficial to you in the future. Um, if you're not versed with IRAs, an individual retirement account is something that you put, uh, you put your currency or uh, asset into, and you have to wait until you're at least in the US, you're 59 and a half in order to access it without getting hit with the taxes uh, mm -hmm. that you would normally get hit with with capital gains and all of that. Um, I got hip to it when I, a little bit after um, I uh, got back with y'all and got into crypto. Um, a lot of the influencers on YouTube would, uh, that I listened to, would talk about it um, and I, you know, I gave him a call one day cause I had a little bit of, uh, I had some money in a retirement account from one of my uh, part-time employers that I really didn't know what to do with. And I wanted to do something productive with it instead of cashing it out, getting the tax hit and then mm -hmm. uh, losing that tax money, that money that would go towards tax and put it into something that wouldn't be beneficial. It was only about $23,000 and, uh, but it was something that I knew by the time I turned 59 and a half, which I'm 53 now, mm -hmm. it would, it would grow in value to the point to where it would be viable to add to the portfolio. And I trust capital is a crypto IRA, but the beautiful thing about it is you can invest in crypto. You can invest in um, uh, precious metals as well. They, and what I like about it, they continuously upgrade their platform mm -hmm. to the point mm -hmm. to where you know now they have staking, and it was in it's in beta form. It's getting ready to come out of beta beta form. The only thing that you can stake right now is Polkadot, and they wanted to test it out, I guess, with Polkadot, and you can earn nine point five percent APY which is you know, way better than what you're gonna get in the bank. Um, the bank you're gonna get 0 0.1 <laughs> or some, something stupid, something negligible <laughs> to the point to where it's like, you know, you would, you, you look at the people that's in charge of like, man, this is a, you know, you guys are, you're playing with us. The banks are, they're, the traditional banking system as we know it right now, you're not, your, your money is not going to go far as far as like if you have it in a savings account or something like that. So this is by far something that you can gain more in a, in the long run than you would if you was just having your money sitting around. Mm. Okay. So I, I, I wanted to go two different ways with this. So this is like a two part question. Mm -hmm. um, you, you being a person <clears throat> who uh, recently retired, you were able to uh, transfer over your retirement account to this I trust capital without any penalty or any uh, any problem. Is that correct? That's correct. What I uh, and I've you know I've told y'all this before. I told mm -hmm. Randy this before. I am paranoid, but I want I don't want to just have that that drop money that I get sit around in an account to where it goes off of the T bill. Cause that's the way it's set up. Yep. The T bill is what two point, right? Two point uh, something percent yeah. right yeah. now. And I figure, you know, if I can put in this something that would get me something more in the range of a uh, um, what is that? What is that called? Where you uh, like an annuity or something like that that'll gain you more 
I'd rather get more percentage points than, you know, a traditional uh, savings account would get. And it, you know, it just happened to, to be something that once I did the investigation and talked to the people uh, that are based out of California, it's something to where I'm, I actively, when I put my retirement paperwork in, I'm going to have a couple hundred thousand go over to iTrust Capital, mm -hmm. divide it up to where I got, a, uh, I already have two accounts, but I'm going to put one in a traditional IRA. And okay. you can also have a Roth IRA, crypto IRA. They're all, they're both crypto IRAs. But I, I figure if I, you know, diversify like that, I could have one for the first lady and then one for the chief. And then once we both get to the point to where we're 59 and a half, if it's looking good, which I, you know, if you're, if, if you're in a crypto space or been in a crypto space, you know, the potential that these assets have, uh, and you know, that, you know, you'll be able to be better off by, you know, selecting this. Yes, so that, you know, this is one of them things. Now, I got just, a uh, just, just for the people, just for the people, cause they may not know when you said uh, drop money, can yeah. you explain what drop is just for, you know, okay. so, so, so you know, what that is. You know, if you have a career, right, you got your pension. Mm -hmm. We have our pension as firefighters, yeah. but also there's another layer that they added to it. It's called the drop account. It's an acronym for something. I forgot. Deferred uh, Retirement Option Plan. Yeah, do, yeah, that's right. Deferred Retirement Option Plan, drop. So what, what it is, a certain percentage of your uh your paycheck goes over to or pension is a pension it's or paycheck the pension. it's the pension it's pension goes over to that and they stack on top of it yeah so, you know instead of getting your pension at the time that you retired it goes over into another account yeah it goes over into another account and you have your pension your drop and then if you got a 401k or a 401b <laughs> or whatever you have that as well it's just another uh, another asset that in the form of currency or money that you will have available to you so that your retirement will be a little bit more comfortable. Okay. I didn't want, I didn't want to leave it in the hands of them because if something happened, you know, I I'm old enough to go to, to, to let, to tell y'all about the Enron thing. I talk about it all the time, how they just rug pull people and then the ones on top took the golden parachutes yep. and all of that. I don't want that to happen to me. If I, if my money gets messed up, I want to have a hand in messing it up to where I just have to look myself in the mirror and, you know, smack myself a couple of times. <laughs> I feel you on that, man. So I wanted to, like I said, it was a two part question. I wanted to juxtapose that with a lot of young people who get jobs now and they don't have pensions. They don't have 401ks. You know, these jobs are kind of like, you know, they'll pay you more, but yeah, they don't give good. you any benefits. So what would you say maybe for young people uh, maybe getting started in a, a thing like I Trust Capital will it start building up their uh, uh, their IRA or 401k. Take it from a guy that did not think when I first got on the fire department back in 1996. Okay, I was not thinking about retiring because I was young. I was 26 years old. I wasn't thinking about that mm -hmm. sh that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, you know, just coming off a of divorce and you know paying child support and the money was money was funny and I was like shoot I'm gonna put the minimum in this that and the other and that's one thing I can kick myself with but as a young person what I would tell you always always think about the future because if you're if you got decent health and you know you living decently if it's some money that you you know know that you would not miss or money that you know you know you want to look to have in the future, an individual retirement account, whether it's a, a regular stocks or whether it's a crypto um, uh, IRA, it's gonna be something that's gonna be beneficial to you. You always wanna look to have something to go into the future with. If you're, like say, if I would, if this would have been around when I was 26 and I would have put the minimum in, it, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have did five years in the drop because I wouldn't have had to because I would have had enough, I would have had enough in there to where I would have just been able to go on with the next stage of my life. I could have stayed a little bit longer to get a little bit more money, but 
I'm trying to recoup that time. Gordon, you always talk about recouping that time. Mm -hmm. Time is time is something that, you know, it's the most, it's the most valuable uh, commodity that we don't really think about. Okay. We trade our time for a little bit of, uh, a little bit of currency, fiat currency. And in the grand scheme of things, we miss out on family functions. We miss out on things that could occupy our time that we can really enjoy. And I'm just trying to get that back. Mm -hmm. Mm, okay so think so, about your future if you're younger so if for um so then if you're talking about maybe younger people or maybe older um uh, for i trust capital is there any kind of um guidance over there for people who may not know where to put their money how to allocate it the percentages and things like that do they have those kind of services yeah you i mean you can always call the platform call the company they can you know, talk to you about it. Now they don't have like the uh, the advisors, they can't give you like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. But if okay. you do your due diligence and you, you're you uh, investing in things that you know, that's one thing I gotta say off rip. When it comes to cryptocurrency or when it comes to regular uh, traditional stocks and, and uh, assets like that, you always want to, invest in something that you know is going to have utility what is it going to do is right. it solving a problem is it providing security for a platform or for application is it uh providing liquidity meaning can you get liquid if you got so many tokens or so many assets can you sell it or trade it for something that's going to have value the same amount of value or more mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that uh you invest in assets that can bring in interoperability to where the things that we're talking about can all communicate with each other and uh you know you can like a, a, a digital ledger really can't talk to certain blockchains right now right. some assets like quant will allow three lines of code Boom, it's easy. They can talk to each other. So now something that was sort of like, I got this over here and I got this over here. Now they can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So you always want to invest in something. And I don't get me wrong, I'm not no expert or nothing, but common sense is common sense. Right. If you, you know, if you're messing with, if you're investing in assets, I invest in assets that one bring liquidity, interoperability, security. And I know that's going to be around for the long, long term. I'm not going to invest. I, well, I got about 1% of my portfolio in the meme tokens, which now I'm learning that that's something that you should do because it's more volatile than the ones that's going to provide the true utility going forward in the future. But you can still make some money on it. The, you know, uh, Cash can tell you that. Ain't that right, Cash? <laughs> you and your doge. <laughs> I still got some doge. I still got a little bit of doge. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, we had talked about on a, a, a show a long time ago about neuroeconomics. Okay. And yeah. then, um, what they were talking about is what they call uh, risk aversion. Yes. So, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, it, it, to me, I'm not trying to simplify it too much, but it, it has a lot to do with your age, right? Where yeah. if you're younger, you can take more risk with your yes. investments. And then when you're older, like you spent, 30 years building up your your capital and your wealth, then you have to look for ways to protect it. And yes. not really like, so what, what, what would you say about that as far as um, your risk aversion now that you are retired and you're going into your second half of life? Well, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I'm taking a chance with, I'm taking a chance with the uh, cryptocurrency because mm -hmm. it's not traditional stuff that everybody, is used to the stocks and bonds that you know everybody is used to. What a lot of people across the whole world don't really know right now. Now us four, we know about it. We're mm -hmm. going into a new financial system. Yeah. All right, everybody that's listening to this video, you have to understand that financial systems only last a certain amount of time. We've been under a debt-based fiat currency system for what in the US 
<laughs> yeah, too long. too long. And they normally anywhere between 70 to 100 years, it always, always, you can, it's, it's documented throughout recorded history. It always collapses on itself because it's not something like God's money, like gold and silver. It's not right. something that, you know, especially the debt-based stuff, the currencies that we mess with now, they're not backed by anything. We give it the value, okay? It's not saying, okay, we used to, back in the day, and I remember my mom and daddy talking to me about it. You could go to a bank, and you could, if you had $500 and you wanted some gold, here, here's $500. I want $500 worth of gold, and they would be able to give you $500 worth of gold. Once Nixon took, in 72 took us off the gold standard, the money actually became, that's when it started to really start to uh, devalue and get debased because it, there's no hard asset back in it. Um, we're going back into that because that, and humans, we've done that multiple times over the, over the span of human history. Um, it, it's something that we, it's like we're insane or something. We keep doing the same thing over and over. And, <laughs> and, and it's the truth. It's funny, but it's true. <laughs> you know, we, if you got some common sense, you don't want to keep doing something that is not going to be beneficial. So right now with the age that we that we're in the aquarian age we're come, we're into something to where we're going to things are going to start to get balanced out evened out and and more and more fair right now the system ain't fair but i really think that we are at a precipice financially to where we're back in where it was in the 90s to where the dot com era to uh -huh. where you know Microsoft, Amazon, you know, all Google, they all came in onto the scene and the dot com. Now, all of them didn't survive, like the Netscapes, AOL, all of that. But, <laughs> <laughs> you got mail. <laughs> but, you know, like y'all didn't have a little scene. Oh, I had it. I had it. Yeah, well, okay. But we're, back then, when that happens, a lot of the bigger companies gobbled up all the protocols, yes. the HT, the HTML, the uh, IC, the ICP, TP, or I don't know if the acronym is right, but all the little protocols, the, each individual protocol was supposed to have its own value. And each individual protocol was, if you invested in it, you were supposed to be, you know, pretty good on it. But now, uh, well, back then, they, you know, greedy people snatched it up. Right now, the way it's looking, it's going to be a little bit more fair. Regular investors like us will be able to see more value when it comes to different protocols. If you're investing, I'm saying all this to say, if you're investing in applications and protocols, you want to invest in applications and protocols that's going to bring you value going into the future, as opposed to something that's more uh, volatile, not to say that crypto is not volatile, but if you're in the right ones that are providing the interoperability, the, the uh, security, the liquidity, the things that I mentioned earlier, I really think that you should be okay. I invest my my little bit of chump change in the things that the banks, mm -hmm. uh, countries are investing in. If I'm messing with something that the, the International Monetary Fund, the Banker International Settlement, the World Economic Forum, if they're investing in things, if they're saying these assets are going to be the assets that we're going to look to and this, we're going to be on a blockchain based system and it's going into the future, I want to be in front of that train or in the, at least in the front car and let it drive me as opposed to chasing the train mm -hmm. and trying to jump on at the end. And, and let's be honest, as black folks, and I ain't trying to turn it into a race thing, but as black folks, we are always late. We always catch on later we have the opportunity now if you know if we get into this space we're very very early and ride it out you know this is something that's not a quick quick uh wealth thing and i learned this from aaron if you know your wealth is going to come it may not come in one year may not come in two years but five ten years if you can wait I ain't got number time now. I'm I'm gonna wait, but I'm gonna make sure that when I invest in stuff, I'm investing in something that's bringing a fixed a fix to something that needs to be fixed. Okay.
<clears throat> but you spent, like he said, you spent a significant amount of time building the wealth where now the faith that you're in is protection. Whereas somebody who's 23 or 33 mm -hmm. is working, not to say to chase the bag, but they're chasing the bag because they haven't quite built what yes. you have built. Right. So like a lot of people look at Simon and they're like, wow. And you just have to say Simon spent a considerable amount of time building the wealth. Like he didn't just jump out the door like, hey. hey and, I'm, and, 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 and I'm cheap as hell. I'm cheap as hell. Yeah. So you know, I ain't gonna be spending no well, money. Well, he's, he's frugal, right? Because when people I say frugal. cheap, I'm frugal. When people say cheap, I always, um, frugal, I always right? perceive it to be you're not buying quality things. You're just getting yes. what you need. Like he's frugal, I'm right? Frugal. So he's not quick to. He's not quick to splurge, but he does splurge on like family things. So vacation, yeah. like, like I said, um, my laptop just wanted to die one day and he went and he bought them. No, just give me 10 minutes. I got to go upstairs and get something. Yeah. Right. No conversation or anything. I thought I was going to cry and he just, no, nah, we'll go get you a iMac. Don't worry about it. So he'll, he'll spend money when it's necessary. But that's important too, right? Yes, because that very. is part of the wealth building slash wealth protection process. Does not yes. make sense to call iTrust Capital, get all of these things going, get the drop money, get your pension, get whatever else is um, owed to you. And then you mismanage the funds because you have so much of it. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of retirees do do that. They outspend their retirement, not how could I say it? Not to say that they're being impulsive. We see that with um, where my mom lives. Well, uh, um, it's a thing we we talked about before, um, where people kind of outlive their retirement, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because um, if you have uh, some kind of set retirement, um, let's say amount that you would receive mm -hmm. uh, because of inflation, you know, year over year over year. Um, you, you just you're on a, a very set income and your money isn't it's not as strong as it was that's why people have always been coming to Mexico moving to Mexico other countries so their retirement and stuff like that could uh, go a little bit further so that, that's a good transition so because you guys um, both are looking into Belize uh, uh, how do you see that as far as your you know, your purchasing power, your spending power, if you went down there and spent some time, um, how would that, how do you see that? I'm gonna let Randy jump in on that because he's been down in Belize more than me. I've, you know, when we went on that cruise years ago, yeah. that, you know, Belize back then, if we would have, if I would have been where I am right now, man, I'd be down in Belize right now. Because back then when we was there, Belize, the, the conversion rate was 15 to one. Yeah. 15 Belizean dollars to one U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. And well, now I, it's two to one. Yeah. And like you saying, now that we're looking at retire, retirement and he's at in retirement, mm -hmm. we are on those fixed incomes. Your money has to go further because we are living past retirement years. Yes. Because we're healthier. We're thinking, we're conscious of our health, mm -hmm. uh, our mental health, physical health. Um, you bringing up good points. Uh, and so with that being said, we want to sit here and know where our money can go. We could live in Aruba, yeah. but can we afford Aruba? Exactly. Uh, probably not. We could live in Mexico, like you saying, and our money will go further. So yes, those are good points that you're bringing out that we have to think about how we are, are budgeting our money now that we are in retirement. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like he's saying, I trust capital is one of those programs that I'm looking to get into so that when I start investing in it, you know, you can see how you can diversify your, your portfolio to uh, see how you can invest in these different currencies, these different uh, cryptos, whether it be uh, precious metals or something, so that once these, uh, these metals and these cryptos go up, you know, your money does go further. Yeah. And I ain't sitting here saying, oh, I'm going to blow my whole drop money or all my retirement money on it. But I'm going to sit here and, you know, consciously make a decision to say, OK, I'm going to take a portion of this, put over here, you know, while I still got my, my main bag over here. So, 
Okay, so as two people who are like, uh, like you said, Percy is is retired, and you, you, Randy, are on your way to retirement. Um, have you guys? Do you guys use financial advisors, or do you just do your own due diligence to figure out how you're going to invest and um, prepare for retirement? I've I've talked to a few financial advisors, mm -hmm. and it's cool, and I understand what they're talking about. But cool. I see I see something coming in the future that's a little bit different than the traditional retirement uh, funds and assets that we can invest in. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I want to be on the new shit so that it could mm -hmm. drive me as opposed to me chasing it. So, you know, a lot of you and a lot of the listeners out there, you can talk to if you know people at banks, unless they're higher up, they don't. Some of the tellers, I went to the bank the other day and deposited some money. And I was telling them, like, no, nah, you know, it's going to be a lot different once, you know, a lot of the banks, the, it's not going to be a lot of, like, uh, brick and mortar banks because a lot of it's going to be online, which mm -hmm. we're moving into. And a lot of the stuff is going to be more and more digital to the point to where, you know, the landscape is going to be totally different. And I told them, I said, you know, the crypto, the crypto assets is coming. And the block, everything's going to be on the blockchain. And they didn't even know nothing about it. The guy, and I told him, I said, man, y'all. Yeah. yeah, I was just telling him, like, look, if I was y'all, I would look into cryptocurrency and the cryptocurrencies that provide liquidity. Because liquidity equals capital. Capital equals banks and big market stuff. And whenever you, you know, just let me give you an example. I invest in the asset Zenfin XDC. That's for trade finance. Mm -hmm. Right now it's two cents. Do you think trade finance is going to blow up at a particular point? It has to. Right. I mean, it makes no sense for it to be where it is right now forever. Mm -hmm. That's and that's what I'm hedging on. I'm I'm betting. I'm making a I'm making a bet because everything is a risk. It don't matter whether it's a traditional oh. That's a, uh, we looking at this old, <laughs> I thought it was a straight cat. I thought it was a raccoon. <laughs> what the hell? We outside on my deck. So I'm like, well, shit. But, but, um, I was, it kind of threw us off. Yeah, I was like, what was I saying? I was a big ass cat. But it's also Moving. funny that you mentioned that we use financial advisors. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they come by the firehouse and, all uh, the time. They come by all the time trying to get us to invest in these major corporations. Mm -hmm. Not once have I even heard them talk about cryptocurrency or anything. It's just to get our, because they know we up for retirement. Yeah. It's just to get us to move our money into these big corporations. And it's so like, that they can make more yeah, money. So they can make more money. Give you pennies while they stack dollars. And then when you do mention, you know, cryptocurrency or something, they instill the fear factor. In yes. You, you know, and it's like, hmm. You know why? Why don't we want to talk about that? And it's, oh no, you know Bitcoin is is they're going to crash. And they're yeah, it's, crash. It's, man, it's, it's for I invest in it. It's for <laughs> drugs. It's for you know they use it for kidnapping. Like J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon is the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. This past week, the man had the nerve to say that Bitcoin was for scammers and was for uh uh uh. You know, just nefarious stuff. Yeah, yeah. When anytime a big corporation says something like that, you want to investigate why they're saying it, and it's to scare retailers like us with that. Oh Lord, I got this little bit of money. That little bit of money that we value so much, or currency that we value so much, they don't want us to take the risk that they know that they're taking that's going to provide them more capital in the long run. If I see them investing, or talking about something, I want to know about it. And once you do the research on it and you find out, hey, they done bought, they done bought it. <laughs> you know, why they are you telling us not to? Them. They tell us not to so that we won't be on that level. And yeah, you know, and, and as far as Jamie Dimon, I'm not going to go in too hard on him, you know. But uh, Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan Chase caught a RICO charge uh, yeah. a couple, couple years ago, right, for... Um, uh, they call it spoofing, but uh, manipulating the, the metals market. So they still do it. They're still doing it. They paid what <laughs> two billion? They paid a two billion dollar fine. But yep. in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, they are 
manipulating the metals market. They are purposely devaluing gold and silver. Yeah. But that's another thing that I want because we're getting ready to get into it. And I'm going to show you all the platform. In this crypto IRA, you can invest in gold and silver. Right now, there are, there are investors and influencers and people that have really been in the metals market for years. I'm talking about decades. Yeah. They know that it's been manipulated and mm -hmm. they know that at some point it's going to have to get revalued. Yeah, the yeah, estimates yeah. right now, an ounce of gold right now, they say should be anywhere between thirty-five to $50,000 per ounce. Mm. Okay. Now, what are they doing right now? They're, they're uh, trying to, they're trying to talk, they're trying to FUD fear, uncertainty, and doubt, crypto, and Bitcoin, they tell you it's a store of value, okay? Some will tell you to get it, some will tell you don't mess with it, but it's all a scheme to where they trying to make sure that you don't become wealthy. We're all chasing generational wealth, mm -hmm. okay? And, you know, if something makes sense to you after you do your research, if you, if you see big entities utilizing it or you are, are investing in it, why wouldn't you take a little bit of your discretionary income that, that will not hurt you? Now, we're not investing money that's going to, you know, make or break us to the point to where, you know, I would not have this, this money that I'm utilizing uh, in these assets if I did not believe and know with common sense that at some point in the future, it's going to be more valuable than it was when I first invested in it. Common mm -hmm. sense, y'all. Common sense. So let me ask you then, because as as being people, as as like I said, the chief <laughs> retired, and uh, you know, Randy, he's 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 looking to retire pretty soon. Um, how do you see about the investing as far as like your future generations, your children, your grandchildren? How do you see that? Do, do you do you do you do you have like the plans of putting away for them and? Just, you know, it, it, you know, just explain to me about that. I ain't gonna lie to you. When when these assets start to go up in value, I'm gonna take some ROI and I'm opening accounts for my seeds. Mm -hmm. You got to, because they only know what they know. And if they listen to you, they they're they're younger, they're gonna do what they're doing. But if you can help them out with something that you know you set for them and say, hey. You know, it ain't no quick stuff, but when you become this age, you should be able to, you know, have this amount of value or a decent amount of value. I'm right. going to set up IRAs. I'm going to buy gold, silver, all of that. And I'm going to have it. And I'm going to teach my kids. Now, all my kids are grown, but I'm still, you know, you still can learn because I'm still learning. But I'm going to mm -hmm. teach them about value and, and I'm, I'm teaching them right now about value and the, the the assets to invest in in order to go forward because let's face it gold and silver ain't going nowhere it's been here it was here before us it's going to be here after we gone yeah. all right and it's the reason why they are devaluing it if they want to keep it down that means that they have a lot of it and then they can make it go back up when they need to make it go back up if you get in the game and get a little something i'll put my pennies where they put their dollars Yep. That yep. way, when they when they dollars go up, my pennies will turn into dollars. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just something just, you know, a lot of it is common sense, but a lot of it is is, you know, is is learning about the markets. You know, you ain't gotta be a big technical analyst and all that. I am by far nowhere near uh uh, uh one of these big investors or whatever. I'm just a regular Joe Schmo. But I'm not stupid. I know that, you know. Two plus two equals four. And if I stack my twos and get my fours and then four, four times four is 16. If I can multiply, I'm going to multiply. Mm -hmm. Randy has, he has, do you remember what you had to say? Oh yeah. Um, hmm. I was going to say, um, you pointed on something earlier about um, doing the same repetitive things over and over again. And yeah. before we started this live, um, year after year i see guys retire and year after year you know they they say oh man i can't retire yet um the you know market, the market man. the market is, is doing its thing and i gotta stay a couple more years mm -hmm. well 
why not do something different? Why not invest in something different? I, I, we all got the deferred comp pension, you know, but we ain't doing nothing different than what the last guy did. Yeah. So I was saying, you know, using you as an example, uh, who I use as a mentor in, in this crypto thing. Uh, I appreciate to, that, man. Because, I, you know, I still feel like I'm a newbie because I look up to I I look up this and shit. That's why we all in this group. Too, yeah, this yeah. And, and collaborate to talk about this stuff to say, hey, let's do something different. And now that we're doing something different and, and speaking it out and into existence to, a, a, you know, collaborate yes. to help each other to get these generational wealths going because mm -hmm. it's time to do something different. Yes. You know, to figure it out. Because like you saying, you tired of being on the back of the bus or yeah. trying to run to the train to catch up to everything. Yes. Now we got to get in, on the front of the bus or in the front of the train and in, in the engine room with the, with the conductor yeah. to, that's, that's... to get in front. So that's what we're here doing right now because it's time to start doing something different instead of sitting here year after year saying, the market is down, I can't retire yet. Nah, I ain't going out like that. Fuck it. So that's why I'm here to learn. Yeah. Especially on this I Trust Capital because you showed me your account and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is something I want to do, especially while the market is down. Yes. Because you invest while it's down, not why it's up. Yeah, yeah. You always want to buy low. When there's blood in the streets, it's time to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a question. I have two questions. Yeah. <laughs> question one is, um, did, how did you, how did you learn about I Trust Capital? Was it through the fire department? No, I learned it when I started, when I got with y'all, got back with y'all and started uh, my cryptocurrency journey. It just kept coming up in my YouTube feed. The, oh, okay. influencers, the influencers that I was, uh, it's this shout out to Kevin Cage. Is a, He's a YouTube influencer. Shout out to Kevin Cage. Kevin Cage. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nah, Kevin Cage solid. That's the solid. He's still yeah. good yeah yeah he got me hooked on to him yeah man he's solid he's very solid he do technical analysis he is a very solid guy one day i want to meet him i you know he's 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 a very he's a very fluent guy in this space he's been in it for a while he's he's he he got in a long time ago and he's seen assets go up he knows about the fibonacci which fibonacci is life fibonacci is in everything in life it's just mathematics you know it's, that's I'm all it is. We're gonna do a show. Yeah, we might. About Fibonacci. We, there y'all go. Have, we might have to do a show about that, man. Show top loading. Up, top up We're game. going to do a show about that. Uh, we're going to do a show about that. Oh no, I'm going to do the that's show. That's how. I, that's how I found out about it. You mm. know. That's but all. I asked that question. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just said it made sense. Yeah. So I asked that question because that's important, right? Mm -hmm. He had asked about. He had asked you earlier about. You know, what's your advice, suggestion, recommendations for young people? Here is a, I don't want to call it a problem, but here's the sticky wicket. Okay. Right? <laughs> it's a sticky wicket. <laughs> Younger people are more exposed to corporate America. No matter yeah. how you flip it, twist it, turn it. Mm -hmm. um, and traditional finance spends a lot of money on propaganda, promotion, yeah marketing and i'm going to say it brainwashing right yes. this is what they do so when we talk about our our seeds our children our grandchildren um lord willing waiting on shot uh, um, when we talk about that we also have to understand that like i trust capital is a fantastic program yeah. that women and men who make great money at corporations and stuff have absolutely no knowledge about at all you understand what i'm saying even if they say oh crypto's a little shaky for me okay well precious metals is a lot safer yes you don't have that type of that type of marketing that type of promotion mm -hmm. like a lot of the stuff that simon talks about is hundreds when i say hundreds i'm not i'm not over exaggerating i'm telling you guys it's hundreds of hours of searching and vetting vetting and searching searching and vetting mm -hmm. right so then he's able that's why i was calling it a blueprint because it's not really yeah. a plan that you just 
haphazardly sketching out and flying by the city of your pants. You fly by the city of pants a little bit, but there's a lot of um, research and vetting involved. So I'm saying all of this because it's difficult for young people like your daughters, right? Yep. Without you, it's like, hey, you know, I work here and they talk to me about 401ks. They talk to me about 403Bs. When yep. we worked at Christ Hospital, it was the 403B. They talk to us. Um, I cannot remember the name of the group that used to come talk to us. But the group that used to come talk to us was a well-known. Prudential. Prudential. Thank you so much. Prudential. Prudential will come and talk to you about all mm -hmm. these great products and plans and this and that. And then, you know, if you bring up crypto and they say, oh, Bitcoin's going to crash to zero, the stock market crashes a lot. It goes down. The Dow Jones is down a thousand trillion points. It's like, down today. your argument. Thank you for saying that, Aaron. It was down today. Right. I keep <laughs> yeah. getting the alerts. Right, like, right. Oh, so I'm bringing <laughs> all of that up because part of the sticky wicket is that in the commercial world, Mm -hmm. Our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, whoever, the, 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 the younger part of the community is exposed to and immersed in traditional finance. Yes. Traditional I, finance. I've never seen an iTrust Capital commercial. Yep. Never seen I'll tell you it. Something but else. They're going to start to see more and more of it because it's more, it's, it's more mainstream because we're, 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 all arrows are pointing towards the blockchain. And digital mm -hmm. ledger technology, it's going to happen because it's more secure. They, you know, with Jamie Dimon and other Al Munger and all the old heads talking smack about, you know, you know, it ain't worth this, it ain't worth that. They're all invested in it. They are all invested in it. They're going to tell you to look that way, where they're going that way, getting the prize. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because throughout human history. There's always the people on top in the know, and then there's the rest of us. If we look up and see, hey, they're doing this, that, and the other, and we see how they're living, if we scratch the surface of it, it's going to be a, a ride. Everything is volatile. Stocks, whatever you invest in, it's going to be kind of volatile. Cryptocurrency is a young industry. It's volatile, but so is stocks. When stocks first started, Shit, it was a, it was volatile. Very, it was way more volatile than what it is. But once regulatory uh, regulatory clarity came into play, and they say these are the rules of the roads, stay within these parameters, then all of the big money came in, and that's exactly what's getting ready to happen mm -hmm. by next year. Okay, all of the listeners, by next year, you are watching. Remember this video. You're going to start to hear about blockchain digital energy technology. You're going to start hearing about more and more tokens. It's not going to be just Bitcoin and Ethereum. You're going to start hearing about XRP, XLM, Algorand, Quant, uh, Polkadot, VeChain. It's going to be so many assets. And once the regulatory clarity comes in, a lot of the meme tokens, a lot of the things that don't solve a problem are going to go away. Right now, a lot of us, and I say Black folks, we look at these assets because we don't have a, let's be honest, we don't have a ton of money to outright, we can't drop 10 grand right off the rip on something to invest and then wait 10 years. We ain't got it like that. But if you got a couple of hundred dollars of spending money, of money that you know, uh, go buy some beer, some go Jordans. buy some Jordans. <laughs> you know, I'd much, rather, I'd much rather invest in something uh, other than Jordans that's gonna bring me more and more uh, uh, capital in the long run just like my, my daughter, she works for Foot Locker. She got about 300 shoes up there. Some of them shoes are going up in value like a damn car. I'm like, dude, if you would sell some of those, just sell, sell about a thousand dollars worth of them and let me invest it for you. When you turn my age, you're going to look back and you're going to come to my gravesite and be like, man, you did me a favor, boss. <laughs> I mean, because it, it only makes sense. Things take time to mature. When, it, when the regular stock and bond market first started, it was volatile, it was low, but then over time, the things that were that are going to survive went up in value when they because they're solving a problem, they're providing a service or whatever. Be smart about it. Do a little bit of research. And, and, and you know, if you hear about something, 
research it yourself. Don't just go by what somebody else says. Do your own research. It's mm. not hard at all. Mm. So with that being said, is there um, a minimal amount of money that you have to invest in iTrust Capital? Let's go. Can you, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to log into my account, okay? Okay. Yes, Let me is. log in. Let me go to... Because I want to start investing in it and uh, I need to... Can y'all see it? I can see it. Okay. So this is one... Of, I think this is the regular IRA... Okay, I don't yeah, know if it's yeah, the yeah. I don't know if it's the uh if it's the uh Roth or whatever I gotta look and see, but this is one of them, okay? Now okay. it was more in there, but some of these assets went down, but that's part of the roller coaster ride that you're gonna go in. Mm -hmm. So don't don't focus on your profits right off the bat. Just know that you're gonna have to have some time for these assets to, to mature. mature. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you go into the platform, this is the dashboard, okay. I want to show y'all first the assets that you can invest in, okay? Now, I'm on all, but all of these assets, it shows you what it is, okay? You can click on it, and it'll give you the price, all right? But these assets, these are the assets, Ave, Algorand, Avalanche, Bitcoin, you know, you got your Cardano, Chainlink Curve. Doge. Doge is on here. They got Shiba Inu on here, but here go gold. Yes. Okay, it's gold and um, hold on, I was getting a call. Sorry about that. Go so gold, and then down here is silver. The thing about this platform that I like, you can you can park money in it, and right now, the I think you have to have like fifteen hundred to start it. Okay, a thousand or fifteen hundred start it. But right now, the contributions, you can start off, I think, as low as $500. Put it in the platform, okay? Mm -hmm. Once once it's available, then you can start buying these assets. Once these assets go up in value, let's say Ethereum goes from 26, uh, I'm sorry, from uh, $1,300 to $10,000. I got two of them, okay? Be I can... I can sell it for something else. Let's say I just sell it for gold. And I just yeah. want to park it there because I know that the value of gold is going to be a little bit more stable than some of these assets. Yeah. Park it right there. Once mm -hmm. one of these assets go down to where you want it to be at and you know that it's going to most likely go back up because you've been doing your research and following the markets, then you can transfer it, sell it for one of these other assets. Let that asset run in the platform, take your money back out, park it into USD or park it into gold or silver and go after another one or just sell it for one of these other ones. Mm. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, is going to be viable for the long-term investor. So if you were, um, is there a process in iTrust Capital where you could kind of, uh, yeah, what we say dollar cost average where you know maybe you can have it set up where a certain amount comes out your paycheck every you know every two weeks and then you're just investing or do you have to actively invest well with the way that they got it set up now you can have money come right out of your, out of, your paycheck. out of your paycheck or you can take it out of your banking account so if i wanted to add funds i clicked on add funds or up here where it says choose funding types I can do an IRA transfer, oh, a okay. cash contribution, or employer, employer plan rollover. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I did the employer plan rollover, got the capital into here, and then I bought the assets. But if I wanted to just go for my banking account, I can wire money. I can do an ACH withdrawal, which will be wiring money is one to three business days. Uh, ACH is five to seven. And then mm -hmm. a check is three business days. So if I send a cashier's check, once it clears and that capital is in, is available, then I just go right back to the assets that I want and buy whatever assets that I want to buy. And there it is. It's there. It's there. Okay. Okay. So this is, um, this, yeah. this looks like a really uh, good uh, <clears throat> retirement option, you know, on top of what somebody might already have. 
you know, their retirement plan that they have with their employer. But uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I like yeah, Ice Capital a lot. Man, I watched, um, uh, what's that place called? Benzinga. Is it Benzinga? Benzinga yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I seen the uh one of the C the CEO over there. He did a uh a presentation talking about it. And so it seems very interesting and especially for people, man, because you know, it, I, it, I watch these other things, man. They know that um what do you call it? Social security is not gonna be here. You know, right. they say social yeah. security is gonna end in the next, you know, 10, 20 years. So People have to actively make sure that they have some kind of retirement situation put together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yep. you know, I, I, this is a this is a great thing. Um, I really like I Trust Capital. I like it. Um, yeah, it's a good platform. When I learned about it, it took me a, a few months, but once I found out, because on a humble man, I my part time job, I seen kept sending this email about. You know, you still got some, you got some money in your retirement account. I was like, what? So I called him. He was like, yeah, Mr. Grisby, you got about $23,000. I was like, what? <laughs> like, man, <laughs> run that to me, bro. They yeah, ran let me get that. Let me get that. Right in there. Now, you remember when I was talking to you, man. Yeah. So, and get, and this is for your audience, okay? This is a, this is a trial and error thing. You're going to learn. I was, you got to have a little bit of patience. Remember, I kept talking to you. We was coming off of a bull run, a little run. Yeah. I bought high. So I'm yeah. waiting on this. I got to wait to my stuff at least two, three, four X before I can see any return on investment. Mm-hmm. But I'm in it. So it's one of those lessons that I that I had to learn. And I say this to just let y'all know that you're going to make a mistake. But don't think it's the end of the world. Just do more research. and have a little bit of patience and you know try to get in low if you get in low look at the history of an asset zoom out you get in low then you ride it up if you want to take you know a return on investment take it and let it ride run it into some another asset so that you can compound your money or just you know leave it parked in cash that's what i like about it because i can park it in usd i got this amount i got about two hundred and something thousand uh, that's pending. That those hey, wait, funds what? won't be what over. That, from that's my, pending. That, well, that won't come that's over. From my drop hey, account. Hey man, I'm about to send you my cash app, man. <laughs> Until it get <laughs> fuck out there to the brother. <laughs> but once that's it gets pending? released, hell. Okay. <laughs> once it gets released, I'm gonna I'm gonna stack up on what I believe in, and I believe in this is the the Roth one. So I got my Stellar XLM. That's a liquidity token for retail investors. Polygon is a security token for the blockchain, for different D apps. Algorand, uh, I don't get me wrong. It's, it, it, it has a utility. Um, yeah. uh, the, the FIFA soccer is using that's a mm-hmm. you know, Yeah, they are. Yep, they are using it. Got it. Yep. Uh, Cardano is going to be big. But it's other ones in here that like the central land once that money man i know i know you like engine uh gordon once that once that stuff comes but it's gonna go up i'm telling because it's doing something it'll be viable you know that uh but once this once this clears i'm gonna you know i'm gonna run it into stuff and just watch it watch it mature and watch it go up in value when it goes up in value then it's going to be about securing it like you said and if i want to be secure i run it into gold if gold run up Boom, I'm good. If it stays around the same, I'm still good because I haven't lost any money. All right. We get so and we get so ingrained in worrying about making that quick money, we don't we don't see the forest for the trees. You know, we gotta we gotta kind of slow it down a little bit. So but, but but with that amount of money, because that's a large amount of money, um there's no people over there to help you have some kind of diverse portfolio you just have to do it yourself as far as dealing yeah, this, with capital with, yeah with i trust capital they they'll let you know that they really can't give you financial advice like that like i took okay. a disclaimer out when we first started yeah you got to do a little bit of research if you're the type of person that wants somebody to tell you what to do 
this is not a space for you. Mm. You got to know what you, anything in life, you should know what you're getting yourself into. Right, right. Okay. And you should know like, hey, I want to, I want, I believe in this and I want this to do that. And if okay. you can, and if you're principled and you know that, hey, this makes sense mm -hmm. and you see that it's still, a, it's, it's, it's still around, because I, I do not think the Bitcoin is going to go to zero. I do not think that Ethereum is going to go to zero, nor none of these other assets, besides maybe some of the mean coins might go away. But, you know, gold ain't going nowhere. Bitcoin ain't going nowhere. Ethereum ain't going nowhere. Algorand, Cardano, Chainlink. Yeah. These have been around yeah. since the beginning. Bitcoin yeah. started the whole thing. Yeah, your top 10, and they're going to be there. They're so going to be there. So let me ask you then, if you could park your money in cash, and, I, and we might have talked about this earlier, but the, uh, the arbitrage you can have by going somewhere else by having really the, um, the world reserve currency, and you got your money in the world reserve currency, and you can leverage that against a weaker currency to get more spending power. Is that something that you you're looking to do? Is it is something that you want to do or anything like that? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, if I know that it's going to bring me some liquidity, then yeah, if I can take 50,000 to uh, Belize, and when I get down there, it's 100,000. 100, shit. I'm balling. I'm balling. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that I want to do, shit. That's, I mean, you know, it makes no sense not to. Yeah, and I um and we did a show about this, and I had broke down the the, the finances of the world. So, yeah. um, and, and I don't have the exact numbers. I guess I pull that article up real quick. But I think about eighty thousand dollars made you um, top ten percentile mm -hmm. in and the I world. Think, yeah, yeah, in the world, you know, around the world. So if you went to wherever you're gonna go, Malaysia, uh, Brazil, all these places, your top ten percentile. So, I mean, with, with that amount of money that you have, uh, you know, I ain't, I ain't uh, pocket watching. I'm just saying you get <laughs> that amount of money, you could go around the world and be 10 percent or 5 percent or maybe yeah. 1 percent. -er. When you told me that, Gordon, because, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know me, man, I got a real problem thinking I'm late, thinking I'm, you know, going to get left behind. When you told me that, it puts shit in perspective because, you know, we in the U.S. specifically, mm -hmm. you know, currency runs everything, man. And if, you know, if you don't have a certain amount or if you, you know, if you want to be at a certain status, you got to have a certain amount of money. You know, that you just got to, I don't know, man. It's one of them things where, you know, you just got to, utilize common sense and a little bit of research and do what you feel is right. Now, I don't, I'm not no expert at all. Nowhere near it, nowhere near it. But like I keep telling y'all, common sense is common sense. You yeah. know, I, I feel, I really got a feeling like these assets are going to be something important in the future because they are taking care of a problem mm -hmm. financially. Mm, okay. So do, how do you, um, how do you figure out which, uh, um, I mean, you know, like you said, this is not financial advice, but how do you figure out what amount of money you're going to uh, allocate to what, what asset? Oh, well, it, to me, and it's just like with you, you believe in Bitcoin, Ethereum, yeah. uh, XRP, all the other ones. I, you know, once you do your research and you, you see, like, say with me, I'm a, you know, I'm a big XRP, XLM guy. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. I looked at XRP. This is what got me so hyped on it. And you remember when I kept harping on you and you finally bought some. <laughs> I, I had a buy some, yeah. <laughs> but, but when, it, to me, it made sense. Right. If right. over 70 countries is utilizing it. Mm -hmm. If that digital ledger since 2012 never had an error, never went down. And it was made, that digital ledger was made by some of the same people that helped create uh, some of the blockchain for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, man. It ain't going nowhere. If banks are using it, if governments are using it, if countries need it for liquidity, mm -hmm. if you can put an asset in like fiat currency and get out a uh, ruple, and you can do that within five seconds, as mm -hmm. opposed to five to seven business days, do you not think banks and then big institutions, countries want to utilize it? Mm -hmm. It makes sense, right? Right. So if I if, if I know that a country is investing in that and they're investing millions, I want to invest some dollars in it. Because if they're investing millions, I don't think a country or a corporation will invest millions, if not billions of dollars into a technology and think, oh, well, I'll probably lose it. Nah, they're they're thinking like in the future, this is going to give us exponential wealth so that we can do other things with it i want to be like that so yeah, that's so, that's so a what bet. You're saying I is what, what I, I used to say all the time is follow the money right you see the big money going in one direction another direction follow the money like you exactly. said you want to put your pennies where they're putting their dollars so yep. yes yeah, so you have to follow the money that is uh that is definitely that's definitely true yeah i just um but I, I don't know um, as far as, so for your um, asset allocation. Yes. Um, do you just, you have a, a preference on the things that you prefer to allocate money to, or do you, do you have like a, some kind of a, a setup where you, you know, you want to have a certain percentage here, certain percentage there? certain percentage where it's risky, where a certain percentage where it's more safe and you can hedge your bet, or do you do you just kind of go in on the projects that you believe on? It's a little bit of all of that. I mean, to me, this is all a risk. Mm -hmm. Anything you do in life is a risk. You risk in everything as soon as you wake up. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I mean, you know, you ain't nothing promised to you, right? So. I I look at it like, you know, when I do the research, it makes sense. Big investors, corporations, and 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 banks are into it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what it's like, but it's it's discretionary because income that I'm not taking what I use for my mortgage to get these assets. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I call it my f around money. My my. Look. Okay. I uh I look at it like let me see stop stop sharing. Oh here it is. I look at it like, you know, it's 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 money that like if I wanted to buy a case of beer or buy some more Casadores tequila, you know what I'm saying? What's or that? Buy, what's yeah. Casadores? <laughs> you know what Casadores is. <laughs> 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 but you know that's the way i look at it i'm not going to take something that you know first lady would lose her mind like we can't pay the mortgage because you invested in this yeah we get it back in 10 years i ain't doing all that <laughs> at all you know uh, but you know stuff that i would my, my f around money is going to be invested because i looked at it something the universe spoke to me it was like you know Take that little bit of money that you was going to buy that beer, buy that chronic wit and fucking invest it instead of, instead of, you know. So you disciplined yourself. I disciplined say, myself. Say, I hey, stopped man. looking at, I ain't going to lie. I stopped looking at all of the, the TV shows. When I first got into crypto, I stopped watching TV. I yeah, was only yeah. watching YouTube. I stopped all my shows from Netflix, all my shows that I would watch all the time. I was only watching YouTube because this is something that, the universe spoke to me. I felt it. And I was like, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. And I talked to my wife about it. And she was like, okay. And I said, look, I'm not going to put us in a poor house and I'm not going to utilize money. That's going to take away from our everyday living. And I'm not going to jeopardize our house. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's fair. So, you know, I could, I said the money that I would buy, uh, you know, some chronic with or some, uh, uh, some beer with, or, you know, Maybe we don't go out to eat every single day, you know, mm. stuff like that. Yeah, you know. And once, once she saw that, oh, okay. And then once she, cause she wasn't into it at all, man. 
But mm-hmm. once she started listening to the right stuff, I, you know, I would throw stuff at her and she wasn't really in, 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 interested. But then, you know, she started listening to this one brother on, on TikTok and he was saying exactly the same shit I was saying. And he would, he's a, he's a influencer, but he made his millions off of, uh, what was that? Uh, the uh, Amazon stuff, not the Amazon stuff, but the uh, drop shipping or something. No, it was uh, uh, who, Calvin? yeah, Calvin. Yeah, that's what I'm recording. Here. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got him on. Yeah, he talking. He on right now. Mm-hmm. But he 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 was in the music industry and other things and he started into the crypto thing he saw that it was something that make money and he makes sense and once you know sometimes people need to hear something from other people in order to truly get a better understanding of it i probably couldn't explain it like he can explain it he explained it she made she made he made more sense he made more sense to her now she understand why i invest in what i invest in because it's stuff that makes sense and it's stuff that is is providing a solution to a problem. Okay, so let me ask you guys. Oh, oh, she's back. She's back. She's back in the game. Hey, uh, let me ask you a question. So, like, how do you go about? Um, what would I say? Educating your, your your peers or your colleagues and stuff. How does how has that experience been? Trying to well, just tell you know, other people about it. Aaron, to tell you, me and her be getting frustrated at people. Because you, you try to tell I've him. been there, I know. So I, no, he may send you all the talking, so he don't get frustrated. <laughs> we look at it like this. Why would we tell you something like this if we didn't believe that this is going to be something that's viable? I, you know, am I just trying to, you know, I, I'm the type of person that I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment. I just want to mess my finances up and then I want you to do the same thing. No, it ain't like that. We're trying to help out as many people as we can. And the people that's out there listening to this video, you don't have to take uh, you don't have to take what we say and 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 do your own research. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. But would you do you want to be the type of person that was woulda, shoulda, coulda? I'm 53 years old. I got so many woulda, shoulda, couldas that said she was going to call. It's all good. It's all good. It's, hey, y'all are you guys are influencers. Okay? You're going to get people are going to call you. <laughs> they need to know. But no, I mean, you know, we're, we're not here trying to tell you that you're going to do what you need to do. Just do your research. If it makes sense, get into it. But don't lose the house doing it. Okay. Right, right, right. So I got another question. A pet peeve of mine. This is a pet peeve of mine. So I've been messing around with crypto for many, many years. But a lot of people have jumped into crypto and it's like an MLM situation. People were in my DMs talking to me about Bitcoin. They just got into Bitcoin yesterday. And it, it's almost like making it hard for you to give information to people because it feels like... Yeah. Um, you're trying to get something out of them or sell some, sell them something. Have you noticed that? Yes. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, about, I, I, that's the firehouse, man. Trying yeah. to talk to them. I try and I try and talk to them, and all of a sudden it turned into a, a what? Is, what is those called? A, 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 a pyramid scheme or something? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, pyramid but scheme. Pyramid scheme. I can understand that. Right. Because, no, I'm saying I can understand it because we do have some bad actors. <laughs> right now, I'm, I'm calling it how I see it. We have some bad actors in the community yes. who want to sell you their platform. It's $397 a month for you to get back $15 a month in Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, so when people are on their heels about it, I can understand their apprehension. But I, what my problem is, is all the people who have flooded the the community just... They flooded social media. That's what you're upset about. Yeah, yeah. Right? So this is what I was talking about mm-hmm. earlier when we talk about exposure and immersion. Right? TradFi has commercial exposure, immersion, marketing, promotion. What ended up happening was the bad actors 
flooded social media, mm -hmm. right? With their stuff. Fuck. <laughs> with their fluff, right? And what happens is, is when you're trying to have a, a real conversation, yeah. I, we make it very clear. Part of our brand is Simon Family Investment Ventures will never sell you any. That's not what we're here to do, yeah. right? This is our community outreach yeah. and giving out information. We are not on our own channel. We do not get paid for the information that we give out for the research that we do in order to bring it to you so that you could just have a little bit more info in your life portfolio. Mm -hmm. Yes. But how many actors are trying to sell you something? So like I said, and he's right. I mean, they, they're hopping in his DMs two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Not even a flirt, yeah. right? They want to sell him something. Like she didn't even say you were cute. She wanted to sell you some Bitcoin. So you're yeah. just kind of like, you're put off. And I can understand, especially people who would otherwise be interested, be put off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it helps. It, 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 it. It hurts you getting the message out yeah. because you think you're trying to sell them something, mm -hmm. and you know you want. And so you know we used to try to get the message out. I I don't as much anymore because people just see it as um, you're trying to you know sell them something. You want to you know sell them some kind of platform mm -hmm. and this that the third. When you're just trying to really just get information out. And for Simon, it was he had a friend come to him. Right, that's how this all started. He had an old Navy buddy, I can't remember, but old military fire service buddy mm -hmm. mentioned it to him. Mm -hmm. He looked into it and here we are, 2022. Right. He's just like, you know, I appreciated that as a, as a black man, let's be honest, with the family, a young family at that, was given some game to look into. And he wasn't even black. He was, he was, uh, he was from uh, Greece. Oh, Greece. Yep. Yeah, he's from Greece. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we all going we all encounter stuff like that. Just like y'all was reaching out to me for a couple years before I even got, you know, into it. <laughs> and I was still operating. Listen to me, guys, is out there. <laughs> I was still operating under fear. These two people that's on this uh Zoom call with me, Aaron and Simon, they're like brothers and sisters to me, right? We, me and, me and Gordon, we worked together for a while. And when you went to, you saw a better route for your family, I was a thousand percent in your corner. I didn't try to hit you with no FUD. I told you, get your ass out of here. And then I ain't said it in a, I said it, you know, cause y'all gotta understand that's how I am. I'm a very raw person. I'd say it how I feel. And I told him, I said, man, you young. I said, you gonna, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't do this, you got what about this? But if you're young enough to where you know and you feel it, go do it. Because there will be so many, there are so many people that have so many regrets and say, I should have did this. Yep. You don't wanna be like that. Nah, nah, I'm like old that. now. I'm old now, though. No, you ain't. Y'all younger than me. <laughs> I, was I, young, I was young then, but I'm old yeah. now. Hey, y'all see this? They they younger than me, y'all. <laughs> I'm I'm a and I'm an infant. I'm an infant in cryptocurrency, right. because right. cryptocurrency is in its infancy. But is, I was thinking is. that I was, I was thinking that I, I was running out of time, and I was the the babe crypto was just being born when I got in. It. Mm -hmm. Okay, as far as like it came out and it's a it's it's the, right now it, crypto is a toddler, but pretty yeah. soon in about a year or two crypto is going to be an adolescent, and then five years after that crypto going to be grown, and I say that because y'all gotta understand how fast the pace is it's going. a fast pace we're in a fast mm -hmm. paced industry uh, uh, a fast paced space and it's gonna it's gonna move and you don't want to miss out on it I'm gonna tell you right now. We are in the 1990s, as opposed to, as, uh, if you want to compare the dot-com era to the cryptocurrency, the trend line is almost identical. We are right, we are right where Amazon was when Amazon was a penny. That's all, yeah. Amazon got up to $4,000 per share, okay? My captain, Captain Wolf, I looked at his portfolio, he showed me his portfolio, that guy 
was in Amazon when it was under a dollar. This yeah. mug had tens of thousands of shares of Amazon. Mm. Damn. When I saw it, it was up to like $3,500. I was like, dude, cash a couple of your stocks. You could have been, I said, man, you could have retired years ago. And he's like, oh, wait, well, you know, oh, yeah. And you know, people like that, that's how I'm trying to be. That's I want to have these assets. Another thing too, when it comes to these assets, and I know I'm jumping around, I'm sorry, but when stuff comes to you, you got to get off your head. When it comes to these assets, okay, sometimes you want to utilize these assets to your advantage, meaning, you know, if it's something that you can leverage, like say, my bag, my XRP bag, I ain't going to sell that. I'm right. going to sell a portion of it, but when I do, I'll take a small return on investment, but I'm going to run that into something that hasn't went up yet so that I can compound whatever value that I have. And, and I learned that from you. I learned that from other people in this space. And when you do stuff like that, that's how true wealth is gained. Yeah, wealth yeah. is not gonna come to you overnight unless you get a trust fund, hit the lottery. And what is the averages of people doing that? There's not, there's a small, very small percentage of people doing that. But right yeah. now, the space that we in, I ain't gonna lie to you. There is less than 5%, there's 5% or less of people in across across the entire planet that is investing in cryptocurrency. I think it's still at 5%. It's going up uh, on a monthly basis, but it's a very, very low percentage. If you get in right now and you ride that wave, and then you, as you ride and you do your research and you learn and you mm -hmm. start, you know, moving stuff around that's going to be beneficial to you, you will gain some type of wealth or you will be a little bit better than you were before you started. Yes, indeed. And, and, and there was a, there was a, 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 a post that came out not too long ago about more people being invested in crypto than having um, bank accounts. So it's like yes. 24%, 23%. It was real, real close right there like that. So I was going to ask if Aaron had any questions because I have an off, I have an off, a pivot question for you guys if she doesn't have a question. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You don't have no question? I, I've been asking questions. Okay. So you and then I got to put all that pressure on her like that, bro. <laughs> I, I, just, I just had a pivot question for you guys. So, you know, I tried to put you guys on the uh, spot. Go ahead. But, uh, you know, people ask me, they, they send emails and take comments and stuff like that. So I don't know if you are familiar with, uh, our good brother Tariq Nasheed. So um, uh, people want to talk a lot about uh, foundational Black Americans and building wealth. So, um, what, what would you say about foundational Black Americans? Do you consider yourself a foundational Black American, um, or it, it just let me know? I was, but I don't consider myself a, a traditional. Uh, a foundational Black American, the FBA, right now. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because I used to be like, oh, uh, this little bit of money that the man allowed me to have, you know, I can't yeah. mess it up. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Just don't, just don't over leverage yourself. Okay. okay. Don't, you know, don't go out and mortgage your house on a whim. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I used record, to I'm sorry. I used to I used to be so scared to lose what little bit that I get to where I won't take a chance. All of these people that's wealthy, unless they inherited money, they went out and they took a chance. They failed. They didn't do the same thing twice. They came up. They may have failed again. They didn't do that same thing. They came up and then they came up. And then, you know, it's part of life. But if you don't take that first step, then you ain't going nowhere at all. But for the record, Chris, um, yeah, definition wise, foundational yeah. Black American just means that you are American and your family can be traced back four generations. Okay. Soil. So I'm yeah. not FBA. I get flat for it. That's okay. Right. Um, because my parents, I'm a first generation American, so I'm considered a tether. Okay. She's not a tether. I'm well, see, tether. She likes to bring but, that in. She's not a tether. Right? But the, the conversation comes up because, but I don't. 
you don't even live in America. Oh, <laughs> technically I do <laughs> though, right? I, I do, we own a home in America, like we you live know, there, you know. right? We pay them taxes every year. Mm-hmm. And I'm a US citizen, right? And that yeah. was the whole point of my family. So I would tell her, yeah. So okay. anyway, but- well, if, that's the, if that's the definition of it- That's the definition. On my mother's side, I can say yes. Yes. On then my it's father's just yes. side, I'm gonna say no. But it just, it's just yes. So what are you on your father's side? They haven't traced it back that far. Four generations? Uh, one, two, three. They, three they, they, as it stated to the 1870 census, census 1870 census. It depends census. on how you all, it could be three to yeah. four generations. Yeah. So, okay. So. But okay. you like the American, but even if, it, even if you said, hey, my father's from Belize and my mother's American back 10 generations, you're still a foundational Black American. Okay. I, I don't have none of that. Like mom, dad, cousins, aunties, uncles. I ain't got none of it. So They're then, all from somewhere else. So then I'll, <laughs> then I'll ask I'll ask more questions since oh. we have time. So as a foundational Black American, uh, what what is your views on uh, reparations or trying to receive reparations? Uh, my views on it is, yeah, we should get reparations because of what is being done to us. I won't say what was done to us because we're still being held back. Mm-hmm. You know, let's keep it real. We black. Yep. <laughs> Throughout the entire world, everywhere we go, people look at us and say, look at that black person. That if you're not black, you will not understand it. But it, some of them might, but we are the we are the people that, you know, we are the people that most people do not favor, but nothing can happen without us. Mm. We the first, we the first people. We are gonna be the last people. We are, and and it, and you know, I'm starting to learn that a lot of us weren't brought over here on no damn boat. We was already here, exactly. been here for <laughs> centuries. Mm-hmm. Okay, when you the first man, you gonna get hated on, and it's sort of like you know being a parent. A lot of kids, you know, they get upset and they, you know, I look at it like this. The rest of the world, if you ain't black, y'all just acting out. Mm. You don't know no better. And it's all because of the system of control that has been forced upon everybody on the planet. Mm. You can believe it or not. Somebody is pulling strings. They got a figurehead in charge, but there is a certain few people, a certain few families that's making the gears turn and they keep the grease on the gears so that it won't rust up and seize and then we can all wake up and see how life is truly supposed to be Mm. i mean that's just the way it is you know and i know we're getting off the topic but yeah we off topic but we see we we in we in overtime that's what they call it we in overtime right right now But what, what you got? I know you always got you got questions. She well, always has as a non-foundational Black American, you're asking me the question, which you didn't, because I'm not didn't bother asking. I think that it's important that non-foundational Black Americans get their reparations from the country that oppressed them. So, in my specific case, mm-hmm. I think that a huge case should be built against Great Britain, right? The British Empire is the one who colonized the country of my forefathers. And when I say my forefather, really my direct father. Um, I don't think it is acceptable for non-foundational Black Americans to have their hand out if the U.S. finally issues reparations out to foundational Black Americans. Mm -hmm. So that to me is an issue of contention. Right. Mm-hmm. If you were in a car accident, you get paid out. It's not because I was a witness standing on the street that saw the accident. Maybe I did talk to the police officer. I am not entitled to any funds. And that's how they're treating it. They're treating it like because we arrived to the country and we're already I'm not going to use the word siphon. We're already enjoying the benefits that foundational black Americans have laid before us. There are some who feel like, well, we should get a check too. No, you get your check from the country that oppressed your country. Well, yeah. you know, 
It's going to be people like that. And that's not it's going throughout life, throughout any situation. It's always going to be somebody getting paid and I ain't supposed to be getting paid. Let's look at the, let's look at the so-called Indian people. A lot of them lighter hue people were not Indians mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, well, yeah, we know. Indians. We know what they did. Yeah. So, you know, it's a $5, it's $5 Indians. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is true. <laughs> and it's just, you know, they pay $5 get, get under that realm of Indian, and then they can get rep, some type of uh, reparation or some type of compensation from whatever uh, state, country, whatever, because of the oppression. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think it, I, I truly don't think it's going to happen because of the amount of hatred. And the, to be honest with you, I don't think there's enough liquidity to be to compensate it. Right. That's why I was, I was going to say that. You know, yeah. under this debt based system that we're on now, which is coming down, it's, it's falling. The veil is being lifted. OK, under what we're on, on right now, there's I don't think it's enough liquidity in order to compensate us properly for the, and, all the atrocities. That's been happening. I understand, though, that it has to, you have to be able to, to document, have documented that your family was part of this 1865 census. And that is what will, like, what's the word? Sort out. What's well, you know, It's about Right? Lineage. Because a lot of people won't be able to prove that. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. like, hey, I know we've been here forever. My grandmother wasn't going to be part of nobody's census. You just, right? It would, it would, um, exclude that's what i've been looking for it would yeah. exclude a significant amount of people who legitimately deserve the payout mm. yeah so the money's there let's yeah. like i don't even want to give them the idea the money's not there money's there because yeah. they find the money for what they want to find it for you know how much money israel gets every single year it's israel you know how tiny israel is yeah tiny wow. tiny place very <laughs> tiny and they get billions and billions of dollars from the united states yearly annually like a trust fund baby and they are not the original jews we're not allowed to say that you get our little channel blocks. yeah you about to, <laughs> uh, yeah you about to get that whole channel shut down man. oh i'm sorry Edit that. <laughs> about to get the whole but, shut down. i mean i'm just making a point right that it's a small place that doesn't i'm not saying let me say it right it's a small place where those funds can be used for the people who actually pay into those funds yes Right, you know, they give money here, they give money there, they owe money here, they owe money there. The money's there, they got it. because when they need to find it to do the things that they need to do for the allies, they need to do it for. They find they it. they'll just write a bigger bill. They'll just print off more dollars. They'll do whatever it takes to get that done. Mm. So, and like I said, with the exclusion of all of the people who aren't on the census. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not on the census. And I wanted to say something. I mean, I know we're uh, in overtime. So I wanted to mention something, you know, when she was talking about the reparations, you know, they have something for people from the Caribbean. It's called CARICOM, who are there mm -hmm. fighting for reparations uh, from the United Kingdom. Um, so that that that's their, where they get their reparations that's what from. what they say they're going to that no, but they fight for it. They fight for it. They putting in good work. I, I, I got. I, I mean, you know, I don't want to keep y'all too long, man. You know, but we we've been here for a minute. We could chop it up and. Uh, no, we gotta let the people go. Y'all want to chop it up? No, nah, but we can chop it up and make it and make it. I want to ask one last question. One last question to my brothers. There's a lot of. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? No, nah, I'm listening. <laughs> I owe you some money. <laughs> you owe me one Bitcoin, dog. Okay. That's it. That's